Hello, this is Joshua, November 5, Foxtrot Yankee. I'm going to assemble a QRP version uh, 9 to 1 transformer antenna. And so I've got my kit here laid out. Um, I think the only thing missing here from the photo is uh, a little bit of heat shrink for the outside of the, the winding. So we'll get that cut real quick. Um, when I, I cut these, I don't kit them out. I just, or when I build them, I don't kit them out. So this is going to look a little different. But the idea here is to do a build video of the 9 to 1. Um, I'm going to start by winding this toroid. And I'm going to do this with one piece of wire as opposed to three and then soldering them together and trying to keep everything separate. Um, this is simply a technique that I found that works for me. Um, so this, this is what I'm going to show today, and I'll probably update my instructions uh, at some point as well to show this way of wrapping. Um, but what we have here is a uh, T, uh, T80-2, so uh, 0.8 inches outside diameter, and a mix of two, so ferrite number two mix. And what I found is the absolute best uh, efficiency on this winding is a trifiller uh, 12 turn. So um, we're going to do a 12 turn, which as it turns out, 12 turns is exactly what fits on, the, uh, on this T80 with this gauge wire I'm using, um, which this is, uh, make sure I get this right here. It's just a massive spool I've got up here. It's a uh, 20, 20 gauge. Make sure I give you the right number there. So anyway, um, it doesn't really matter which direction you wrap these, um, other than the final layout will end up looking the same or not from what I've got here. So what I have is if you uh, have the short end, which what you want here is, I'll just see what I've got here. I don't really measure these, I do them kind of by memory essentially, but I've got a, a three inch, uh, three inch tail. And so that's going underneath. Let's see if we can get this to focus here. That's going underneath and then up through, and then you're wrapping around and around and around. And then you count every um, pass through the center. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got ten. Eleven. So really you're going to pull it up tight through the center and then fold it over, fold it over, make sure it's, and kind of pinch it down on top so that it uh, lays nice and flat close to the toroid. I think that was 11, I think that was 12. And then because I'm starting with a, a loose wire, it's hard to hold it tight. And so generally what I'll do is I'll pull this first one back off and I'll grab some needle nose pliers and kind of pull it tight. Pull it back up over, make sure it's got close bends on the toroid, and send it back down again. So kind of undo it, make sure it's nice and tight. Grab it with some needle nose pliers and uh, tighten it and then send it back through and tighten it again. All right, so that's one, two, make sure the camera can see this here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so then this is the part where once you get 12, you want to just kind of make sure they're evenly spaced. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay the next, uh, the next winding is going to go right next to our tail. And so as I flip it over, and I want to fold it along that same tail, I'm going to keep it right next to it. So I'm going to send the end back through. I'm trying to keep this so you can see it here. And so then once it comes back through, you'll see it's following, it's following each winding. And so then as I go, if I'm looking at it from the bottom, 
it's going to sister up to the left of the previous winding. And again, our twelfth one then wraps down and follows, follows this guy. So let me get these pulled all the way back through, continue winding all the way around. Um, and then the next one, or the, the end of the second time around is, is where we're going to do something a little bit different. So let me get these pulled through and uh, I'll show you what I've got and we'll talk about what's, uh, what's different on the next one. Alright, so I'm going to kind of maneuver these a little bit just to make sure my pairs are together. It's not overly important um, for the build and for the quality and efficiency of this guy, uh, but it'll help you understand a little, a little bit easier what's going on here. Uh, I just bent my tail back out so I'm not catching it with my hands. Um, so, let me get a bit of a pointer here. I should have a pencil. I got a pen right here. So the wire starts, try to make sure this is in focus. So the wire starts here, wraps all the way around, 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 and then it comes in over, and then this is our, this is the end of our second, the start of our, or the end of our first, the start of our second wrap time around. And so this guy will pair with the first winding as it goes around. And so that's this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, all the way around, this one, on that side, and then you'll come out here. And so then this time we're going to do something a little bit different because these pairs uh, get soldered together if you're using a, a three equal lengths of wire. Uh, but in this case, because we're using all one wire, we're simply winding it uh, all together, and so there's no, there's nothing trimmed there. Uh, but what's different is with this connection to the start of the third set of winding, um, we have to keep them, um, well, we could tap them and um, that then goes to the center conductor of the incoming feed. So in this case, the center pin of our uh, uh, coax connector, which we're using a, a BNC. Uh, or uh, we can keep it just a little bit extra long and then we'll end up soldering them together, which is the way I do it. So what I end up doing is I put my th my finger underneath that wire and then I pull the wire back through and I just kind of tighten it up against my against my thing my finger. And so that will give me a little bit extra uh, on that wrap at the at the end of your second time around, start of your third time around. And then again, we're going to pair them up with previous windings. Um, and it may be useful to take a look at a diagram of this. Um, but what you'll see is we came up and we're going back through underneath the bottom. So we came up here at the end of our second set. A little bit of extra wire back down and then it landed here and then it landed here and it's going to continue to make a third a third uh, winding on each on each set and so then that will give us 12 total windings for each time around
So as you're winding these, you want to make sure that you never cross over another wire. Everything lays flat inside and outside, on top, underneath the toroid. And again, there's just enough room for everything inside that nothing has to overlap. So there's just enough of an inside diameter. Sometimes you got to move them around to keep everything nice and clean and paired up. Okay, and so then our last one is going to come up on top of that other loop. So I'm going to try and scoot these around and pair them up nice and neat so they're easy to see. But again, it doesn't really matter too much um, for the efficiency because your uh, coupling happens inside the toroid. And so uh, inside, as you can see, again, everything is, is very tight. And then again, the start is this wire here. And then we had a close loop in between, and then we had a long loop. And then we've got the tail, which is our leftover. So what I'm going to do next is the start tail is going to get folded over the top. And that will be our radiating wire connector. And then I'm going to clip the loop. And it doesn't matter which side you clip, but you want to clip one side or the other. Um, and you want to clip it about a quarter inch and pull that out straight. And what you want to do is, there's different methods, but I prefer using wire strippers to um, strip enamel off. So some people like to burn it off, um, use a straight edge blade. Um, I like to just grab it with these uh, strippers and strip it off. Seems to work well for me, so. And of course we lost focus there again. And then you'll do the same thing on the short one. So strip off the enamel on the short wire. And it is going to get soldered together, so if you miss a little bit of it, um, it should get burned off as long as you heat it up enough with solder. So just get most of it off. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is the longer one I'm going to fold kind of into the center. So you can see it's kind of centered. And then the short one I'm going to fold over, over the center guy. And then it's going to get wrapped around. And so now, again, what we've got is the starting uh, three inch tail I fold it over, and that's going to be your radiating connector. And then the next, um, the end of the first pass is flat against it, and then the end of the second pass was long, and we're joining them together with a tail, and this is going to go into the center of our BNC connector. And then our uh, end and final tail coming off is going to be our ground on the BNC connector or any, any RF connector. In this case we're doing BNC. Okay, and then you really only need enough of this to go inside the BNC connector. So again, I don't know, somewhere around a quarter inch. Depends on the connector you're using. Um, but that's what's going to get soldered together. So these two wires will get soldered together inside of the center of the BNC connector. And then this tail gets connected to the ground uh, or the little solder ring on the BNC connector. So I'm going to warm up my, uh, I use a, a pine sill. I've got 22 volts dropped into it. This thing has been sitting for several days. I think it needs a power reset. There we go. Hit the plus. So at 22 volts, it'll drop in about 70 watts is what I found. 
So that heats up nicely. Uh, okay, so BNC connector, put your uh, solder tab on it, as it's called. And our little uh, washer and the nut. And I, I mean, you can do this many different ways. I grab it with a pair of channel locks and a pair of needle nose. You be real careful the tabs on the BNC connector. Uh, it doesn't have to be overly tight, just snug it up. It's going to have some heat shrink tubing. That's adhesive lined on it anyway, so. And then the tab gets folded up. Um, so again, the idea is this will, this center connection that gets soldered together is going to go into the uh, center of the BNC. And then this tail on the outside is going to go through the solder tab. And so what I do is I just take off a little bit of the enamel where it should be passing through. And this, this is uh, going to be a little bit long, so you can always cut this shorter, but you do need enough for the counterpoise connection. We will slide it through. And what you want to do is kind of snug this up so it's as close as, as close as possible. And then what I do is I fold this back and then I give it a little crimp. Make sure it's nice and mechanically tight, although it gets soldered anyway. And then from there, what I do is I fold this back up and that will be your counterpoise connection. Okay. And then from here I like to trim both uh, ends. And so what I do is they get trimmed. In this case they're an inch and an eighth is what I've been doing here lately. Uh, I'm trying to keep this as compact as possible, but an inch and an eighth from the base of, or I guess the center point of the BNC connector to the end. And then from the edge of the toroid to the end. And so if I show that on, on here, these are inch markings. So inch and a quarter is inch and an eighth, excuse me, is somewhere right there. And then if I line that up there, inch and an eighth is somewhere right there. And from there, uh, I'd like to take the enamel off the end because I like to solder everything all at the same time. And so again, I'm just using wire strippers to scrape it off. Just be real careful not to actually trim the wire. Okay. And now we get to do a little bit of soldering. So I'm not going to turn on my fan because um, you won't be able to hear me very well. But there's not much, not not much to this. But in this case, I want to be sure that I get these two wires soldered together. And then uh, you also don't want to heat up the center pin of the connector too much. Okay, those look good. A little bit of solder to fill the BNC connector. A little bit more. And we'll flip it over. Um, I, I like to also make sure that everything is laying nice and straight and flat. So in this case, I want to bend that up just a hair. Okay, and we'll solder the ground. Or rather the counterpoise connection. Okay, that looks good. Okay, and then take the female banana connector, put a little bit of solder into the end of it. You want to make sure that it's full, but if it's completely full, um, it'll essentially spill out the end. So make sure that you've got enough solder in there, but you also don't, don't want to go crazy. 
it's going to get covered up anyway, but you'll have a little lump on there if it's excessive. And you just want to make sure that you heat up the wire as well. Make sure you get a good both electrical and mechanical connection. So maybe a little heavy on solder, but I think that looks okay. And we'll do the same thing on the second one. I'm going to need to take off a little more insulation on here. Usually I'm a little careful not to pull on that because I've, I don't want it to pull out longer than intended. Um, I'm actually going to tin this wire a little bit as well, make sure it's completely covered. There we go. Okay. There we go. That's much better. I'm trying to keep this, I'm trying to keep everything in. Uh, camera view, which means I'm not seeing it as well as I as I normally would. So get a good inspection of this. Okay, that looks good. Alright, and so again, um, I usually pull these off of a spool so I cut them exact, but if they're in kit form you're gonna get you're gonna get a piece of heat shrink tubing. And so what you want it to want to do is make make it just long enough that it will uh, cover the almost to the end of the BNC, or excuse me, the banana connector, and then go all the way down to the loop. Um, and so in this case, it's just a hair long, but what that means is I can pull it back to just the end of the banana connector. And then really the key here is you want it to be past this, essentially the nut on the BNC connector because that will then get covered in a heat shrink as well and that will help hold everything together, hold everything in place. And then we'll do the same thing with the red for the uh, radiating wire. And so I usually just stop that somewhere right right towards the, the back end of the center of the toroid. So we'll slide that in place. And then we'll hit it with the heat gun. So I'm going to probably mute the section, but let me hit it with the heat gun. Um, and we'll uh, go from there. Okay, so next is we're going to take the uh, uh, small paracord and I'm just going to cut it in half because we're going to make two different loops. Uh, and you can try to tie these at the same time, but I like to make sure that my length on each is appropriate for where I want it. And so you're just going to send it through the middle of the toroid and then on the end you're just going to tie a knot. And then we'll we'll rotate the knot to be in the center of the toroid, but just make the knot right about the end of the banana connector. That should be about about right. So then I pull these tight, and then I use 
pair of needle, needle nose to pull these ends tight. And from there, you can trim these. And I don't, I don't worry too much about them fraying, but you can hit them with a the lighter if you feel, feel obligated. So again, you're gonna rotate that around to where the knot is in the middle, but you want your loop roughly the same, same length as the uh, end of the banana connector. Okay, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite side, except we want the two loops to capture each other. And this is definitely overkill because the adhesive inside the shrink tube is gonna grab these as well. Um, but this will provide some strain relief for the two kind of pulling on each other. So you'll just send it through the middle of the toroid. Try to get the camera to focus here. Really struggling. And through the middle of the loop. So then again, pull them out and make the knot. It's just an overhand knot, nothing special. Just make the knot, um, in this case, just maybe a little bit longer, but right at the end of the banana connector. Pull it tight. And again, I use some needle nose pliers to pull the ends loose, trim it off. And we'll go ahead and hit it with a lighter to singe the ends here. Okay. So then what you have is two knots in the middle, two loops going out. You want to just kind of hold those in place. And from there, um, just kind of want to make sure that your loops are, you know, roughly as long as, if they're a little bit shorter, that's not a problem. It's actually a good thing. Um, but you want them roughly as long as the banana connectors at the ends of the wire. All right, and then from there, um, we're gonna use some heat shrink tubing. Now again, I cut these off of a big roll, but if you get them in kit form, what you're gonna wanna do is cut them a little bit shorter. Um, they're gonna come longer than you want, and that's on purpose. But if you can make this piece as short as possible, so between the RF connector, in this case the BNC, in the middle of the toroid, and then over on this end, you really only need it about a quarter inch longer than the toroid, so you can trim that up a little bit. And I'm gonna trim this side because that's not very straight. So what I do is I just kind of lay it over top, line up one side, and then really I'm just eyeballing it because it really depends on exactly how close your RF connector is to the toroid. Uh, but I don't want a lot of extra on the end. Okay. And then this is complete preference, but there is some marking on the um, heat shrink tubing. I like to put the marking towards the RF connectors, so that way there's one clean, flat area. And so once you put it on, you want to make sure that your knots are still in the center of the toroid. And then you want to pull out your loops, make sure they're nice and straight out. And then again, like position them where you, where you want them at. Um, you know, if they were both on one side, it may be a little crooked as it comes out. So put them opposing, so that looks good on that side. And then what you want to do is line up the end of the heat shrink with the base of the insert section of the BNC connector. So again, right at the, right at the base there. And then what I like to do is I like to hold the uh, radiating section. Um, and then I like to heat shrink this side first along the BNC while you're kind of warming up the body at the same time. And then um, as it's melting and shrinking on there, you can kind of maneuver it a little bit, but you really just want the ends of the tube on the BNC connector. So let me do that and hopefully you can kind of tell what I'm trying to do here.
there we have it. So you want to kind of heat everything evenly as you shrink it down. Um, and then if you need to adjust the end, you can do that as you're heating it. But really you just kind of want it to cover, cover the end down to the base of the BNC connector. So that's what you're shooting for. And then you really just need this end to shrink down enough that it covers the toroid. It's a little bit long, that's not a big deal. There you have it. Okay. And that's it for the actual winding itself. Um, I'm going to throw the uh, banana connectors on here. And set those out in the kit. But there's the uh, there's the part that does the work. Just sit right there so you can see it. Um, now you're going to take the radiating wires, the uh, counterpoise wire, and terminate the ends. So let me show you how to do that. Um, and I don't have them cut, so I'm going to cut them here real quick. Um, but really, what you should see left in your kit is the heat shrink for your um, poly stealth wire as well as the banana connectors and then some crimps. Um, and so if you are using your own wire, these crimps may or may not be sized appropriately. Um, these are, I believe these are 14 gauge uh, ferrules or uh, crimps, ferrul crimps. Um, so these work perfect for Poly Stealth 26. Um, I use a larger size for Poly Stealth 26 on the higher power stuff that I've got. Um, but if you're using something with a thicker jacket, maybe it's the same gauge wire, but a thicker jacket, these may not work for you. Um, with that said, you could utilize, um, you could get your own crimps, um, or you might find, um, you know, that if you smash these down a little bit so that they're rectangular. So let me see if I can get that in, in focus here. So if you can smash them down a little bit so that they're rectangular, um, you know, just, just a hair rectangular, you might be able to get the wire that you've got in there. So that might get you a little bit more space. Um, otherwise, you, you really don't ever need to have a lot of weight on this antenna, and it's better not to have a ton of weight on it as well. So again, these are also heat shrinked um, with adhesive lined. So these will actually grip onto the antenna wire as well a good bit. So you might even be able to get away with not having a, a ferrule. I'm not sure I'd recommend that, but um, you could certainly try it if you don't have ferrules. Worst case is you can, you can cut the heat shrink back off, get some ferrules, put them on your antenna wire and go from there. Um, one thing I like to do before I actually cut the wires, because once I cut and assemble the wire, um, I want to put it on the winder. And so I didn't even pull out a winder here, but um, this really, you can use this for shock cable on the radiating wire, um, but you can also, really the main reason this comes with the QRP versions is it helps keep the wire on the winder. And so what I do is I loop it over and then tie an overhand knot, and then I'll, uh, I'll feed back the excess pigtail to make this as short as possible. So you've got really what looks like just a super teeny tiny overhand knot. But because this is stretchy, you pull out that knot and it gets, gets much better, bigger. So you've got to do both. So again, a nice big loop, five, six inches, something like that. Tie it in an overhand knot. You end up with something that's way bigger than it should be. And then feed back the tail into the loop. Feed the loop back in the opposite direction through the knot. And really you're just taking out all the slack is all you're doing. And you end up with what looks like a super small loop. Uh, but then once you tighten up the knot, you end up with something like that. So I like to have this ready to go before I mess with the wire. That way I can use it to capture that wire. 
All right, so you're going to get to see this twice. Um, what you're going to do is feed the wire through the ferrule. This is going to be the uh, connecting end. So you're going to then have a loop and feed it back through. And so what you'll end up with is just a nice small loop of wire. And so what I do is I'll hold my wire on one end. I'll move the ferrule to where that's six or five inches long, which is one, two, three, four, five. And then I'll pull the loop back so it only completes a total length of one and a half inch or five, six and a half inches. So you'll have five inches from from here to here. And then from the base of the ferrule to the end of the loop, you'll have another inch and a half. Hope that makes sense. We'll do it again here on the other one, but and then what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of hold it in place and you can use a fancy crimp, but what I'm going to use is something that you may, uh, you may already have in the shack. And that's really just a, a, a very generic crimp that also has a flat crimp on it. And so what I'll do is I'll crimp that down and I like to make these flat. So I'm going to rotate that around just a hair. We'll see if you can see that. There we go. And so that crimp just goes kind of into the middle there. And really this, is, this isn't this is pinching the wire at all. Um, I'm going to then put some flat crimps on there. But what you can see is it's just kind of rounded on one side and pushed in on the other. And so then from there, um, I'll take the, uh, the flat part of this crimp and this is where we're actually giving it some action to hold onto that wire. And so I've got a couple of flat crimps on there and you can see I'm not, I'm not really stressing this wire, uh, but this right here will hold, you know, cause you don't want to damage the jacket of the wire either. Uh, but this right here will hold uh, quite a bit more weight than even the, this wire is rated for. Um, so don't, don't get fancy. Don't try to pinch the wire to where the jacket breaks, but you do want it to have a good hold on the wire. And then these ferrules have a little bit of a lip on them, so I like to make sure that that lip is smashed down as well. And that's really all there is to it. Um, we'll put the heat shrink on after we solder the end on. So uh, I don't do anything fancy for these ends. Um, I just rotate it around on a blade. And then you can pull the insulation off. Just want to be careful not to go too deep. Um, you don't want to damage the actual... Uh, the wire itself. So sometimes I don't get all the insulation off. That's all right. Um, this insulation will melt, so it'll move itself out of the way. Okay. And then just like on the wire, on the toroid, we will take our banana connector. I realize that's probably mostly off camera here. But all you're going to do is, is fill some solder inside that banana connector. And you want it, you know, mostly full. You don't need it spilling out, but you do want it full. And then if you overheat that solder, it's going to lose some of the resin that's in it. And so, uh, or the flux. Um, so you don't want to overheat it because I'm going to utilize that for the wire. If I, if I wanted to, I could... I could tin this wire instead, um, and then that would make sure that it's got a good connection with the solder. But really, what I like, what I like to do, and this is just, you know, lots and lots of practice. Um, if I don't overheat the solder that's in the banana connector, um, there's plenty of flux left in it, and that will then do a good job of of um, adhering that solder to the wire. And then from there, you want to make sure it is heated, so you don't have a bunch of uh, res or um, flux left over in it. Very good. Okay. I'm happy with that. And this is the counterpoise wire. So this is a 17 foot, which means I'm going to put black on it. And so I put black on the loop first and then on the banana connector. And you can see where the shoulder is on that banana connector. And so you want that to be just at that shoulder. So I'll heat that up and then I'll do the loop.
Okay, and then I like to just kind of mold this a little bit so it's nice and flat. And that's it. So I usually will hook this here and capture the other end before I wind it up. So we're going to the other end, which is not going to have a connector. If you were doing a like a linked section, um, you would want to measure out your lengths and then have your little bit extra tail that you then can run through the ferrule back out and then solder a uh, female banana connector, but we're not going to do that. Now this is just going to be a terminating end. So again, we'll run it into the ferrule. This time we don't need much. And I just do, again, an inch and a half. And so inch and a half is something like that. And we're going to do the exact same thing, except there's no tail hanging out. Smash it down. Again, you don't want to damage the insulation. Fold down the little shoulder that's on the ferrule connector. And that right there is uh, very strong. Of course, you can get a fancy crimper if you like. Um, you can pick them up on Amazon, pretty cheap. Um, but if you've got <clears throat> something that is just a real simple crimp, you can uh, get the job done. So, And try to center that over top. And there you have it. So when this gets connected, you'll simply capture the end of the loop on the antenna. And then th in this case, it's the counterpoise connection. So it's black to black. And then you'll plug it in and you want to hold this so you don't bend it. And there you have it. I don't think this is focused correctly. But that's how that gets connected then. Nice and simple. And we're going to wind it on the winder. So loop on the top or bottom, you can just in any way you like, but fold it back under and I can hold it then with my fingers. Kind of hold it in place while I wrap the rest of the wire on top. Kind of keeps everything in the right place. There it is. So let's do the other connector and I'll talk through it again. Um, but if you followed along and that worked for you, you've got uh, you got yourself an antenna. Um, but if not, I will uh, cut one more. And I've got to look at what I'm supposed to be making here. I've got a 35 foot. So for the 9 to 1 with essentially a 2 inch loop on one side and then a 2 inch loop and a 5 inch tail, um, what I found works well is to cut these length plus 9 inches. So I think I said 30, 35 foot, so that means we're 35 and 9 inches. 35 and 9 inches. So if you get a kit from me with wire, um, these, will, these will already be cut, um, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you're making your own, you can tell you know, exactly how you make your ends, how much extra you'll end up needing. So again, five inches, so one, two, three, four, five, and the end of the loop is at six and a half. So five inches from five inches from here to here, and then another inch and a half from there to there. So your overall length is going to be six and a half. Okay, and then I like to make sure everything is laying out flat. Simple little crimp to hold things in place, and then a couple of flat crimps along it. 
fold down the little flare on the ferrule. Run a blade on the end to remove the insulation. Make sure you don't damage the actual wire inside. Which I can tell I haven't gone too deep if I can't get this off of here easily. Yeah, I didn't go deep enough. There we go. It's good jacketing on this. I really like this poly stealth wire. It's good stuff. Okay, and then take the banana connector, fill it with solder on the soldering end. When you do the uh, the male or the female ends, you want to make sure that you don't fill the wrong end. You could have fun getting the solder back out to make it usable again. And again, I like to stick my loop on first and then stick on the connector end, line that up. And then I like to heat this end first so that it's just dangling and I'm not bending it or anything. And then I do this end. If I do this end first and then I grab this one, I end up making putting a bend in this while it's still cooling and then it's misshaped a little bit. So I like to do this end first. All right, and again, the simple method for connecting these is to secure your loop that has the little tag on the end to the end of the S-clip, which is connected to the antenna, and then you just line up your colors. And again, you want to hold these so you don't damage them when you connect them, but that simple. Disconnect, disconnect. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to store these. I usually just store the S-clips on the antenna or on the uh, toroid portion. Okay, and then put on the winder. So again, I just put on the top, wrap it under to the middle, and that helps keep the pigtail captured. And you can do these backwards too if you like. I just like to have the tails underneath everything else kind of personal preference, I suppose. This is a 35 foot radiator. Okay. And then, um, I'm gonna set this to the side. Didn't do the end yet. So take the ferrule, slide the wire in, make a loop back through, and I'm doing inch and a half on these. Flatten it down, give it a couple of crimps, don't damage the insulation. I like to crimp down the little shoulder that's on there. And then some heat shrink. I try to just make these centered over top. Really doesn't matter too much. So now we've got that tail, got them both captured. 
And then I usually just lay the connecting wires down towards the winder, lay those out flat, and take the loop, wrap it around. You don't need this overly tight. In fact, loose is good. It just needs to be tight enough to capture it. So there you have it. There's a 9 to 1 with a 17 foot counterpoise and a 35 foot radiator. Complete, ready for some field work. This is Joshua N5FY building my 9 to 1 QRP Tofton antenna. So I'll do some more of these on each of my different products. Maybe these are these are long overdue, but anyways, if you got recommendations or comments, uh, please let me know. Reach out. Um, these are winding instructions that are probably useful for other antennas. Again, it's just a tri-filler nine to one. Um, so I'll put chapters in this as well to be sure um, that you can simply look at the winding if that's the only thing you're doing, but for complete build instructions, there you have it. Thanks for watching. 7-3.